Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Bandit Radio Hour. It is October 30th. All Hallows Eve? Eve? The Eve of All Hallows Eve? I don't know how that saying works. It's October 30th. Welcome to the Damn Bandit Radio Hour. Uh, we're happy to have y'all here. Everybody on Twitter? Howdy. Uh, we're recording live, trying to do this thing without a net. Uh, we're going to start off like we normally do. Merce, how the hell was your week? Pretty good. Pretty good. Nothing exciting. Nothing besides discovering awesome music that I send out. Oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that true, technically. But there's also a song called I, the, the Idiot, and it's, it's great. Ow. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's big lib right energy. Uh, nah, hell, uh, let me think. This week, what did I do? More fixing fence. Water's gone down. We found more fence to fix. Uh, so a lot of that. Uh, we worked, uh, we worked our heifers and worked our bulls, but I actually had something really freaking insane happen right before we did this, uh, uh, preface this, we're recording this on a Sunday. It was Friday evening. I got a call at 1030 that a car drove through our fence and crashed and I had to go fix it at 1030 at night. Get done at like midnight. Was the car still there? Or they car's just... still there. Okay. But there, so it's like, it's it's right on the corner of where our property borders another guy's property. And like the car went off the road through the perimeter fence and then through the fence that separates ours and this guy's property. But there's a gate on his side. So, okay. you know, it's not like I fixed the fence and they're going to tear it back down to get the car out. Well, uh, not that they got a way out. So I do that to like midnight. Well, that's, a, that's you thinking they're going to do it logically. True. <laughs> True. Uh, with our neighbor, they might want to do it logically because he's a lot more trigger happy than we are. Uh, America. He's a uh, f- funny story. This neighbor's dad, uh, the old owner of the property, my cousin and his friend were canoeing down uh, a creek that runs from through his property into ours. And... Being on the creek out in the country, doing what country boys do, they were drinking beer cans, throwing them in the water, pulling out guns, and shooting them. Uh, you know why they're in a canoe? Like idiots. Uh, I'd be I'd be scared I'm gonna ruin my guns from it flipping or something because I always flip canoes. Uh, okay, that's, I, was, I was like that actually just sounds like a lot of fun. It does. It, <laughs> it really does. But I'm too uncoordinated for canoes. I'm, life has proven this to me. Uh, it's like motorcycles. No, um, no. So they're riding down, drinking beer, throwing them in the water, and shooting them with his revolver. And the owner of the property comes up and goes, what the hell? And by the way, our family and this family on the neighboring property, we kind of got some history. A little bit of Hatfield, McCoyish. Girl. Like, we don't, the, the current people alive now are all cool with each other. Go back two generations, not, not Fist, so much. Fisticuffs? Fist, so fisticuffs on the front house, on the front courthouse steps, literally. Um, but uh, now nah, that the guy that's dead now comes up to my cousin and his friend and goes, the hell are y'all doing on my property? When the friend, uh, my friend Josh goes, well, thinking real quick, who has no ownership of any of the property, goes, well, you know, the creek's kind of public land and we can use it for however we were. We're still in the creek. And there goes, damn it. Don't y'all have enough property to screw stuff up on? Y'all got to do it on mine. And she, anyways, that's whose, that's whose property this bordered. So I fixed this fence until like midnight. I go home, go to sleep. Wake up at 5.30 in the morning to go do what we got to do Saturday. Work heifers and work bulls. Give them all their medicine. And uh, get out there before daylight. Get some of the day laborers. Get get their horses ready. And we're getting back. And we're getting to the cow pens. And the sun, as you can see now, the sun's up, but still a little dark. And there's a thick fog everywhere. And about like, I don't know, 75 yards out. And I'll I'll remind you, like, the pens we're working cows at, we kind of got a neighbor, like a house right next to the cow pens. Um, Well, while we're getting our horses and stuff and the pens ready, uh, one of the guys working with me goes, Josh, who's that? Bandit, who's that? (laughs) And uh, anyways, I I look out, and I about 75 yards out in the pasture, I see a silhouette of a man. And now here's the thing. The the highway, the, the state road, is directly to the south of me. To the north, there is nothing but open pasture and woods all the way up until you get to the next town. Like, it's nothing but wilderness. And a guy is walking from that direction, and, like, you can't really see him. Well, you see his silhouette, and I go, man, is that our, like, neighbor 
taking a weird way to walk up to us and stuff. And as the silhouette becomes a little more clear and starts walking up, I realize this is a, a white guy I've never seen before. And he is drenched head to toe. He is barefoot. And like I said, he's walking through th from thick woods. He's wearing like, you know, there's like, they're not jeans. Be like those Dickies work pants. Okay. That like mechanics wear. Right. It's like that, but it's rolled up to his knees and he's soaked. Head in his, and he's covered in sand. It's the ghost of Acrefoot Johnson. <laughs> Dude, it really is something like that. And like he comes walking up, and I'm like, hey, you're on our property. Can I help you? And he goes, yeah. My, and he's, he's got a real big beard. And when I look at his eyes, his pupils are about covering his entire damn eyeball. So Did somebody find some cow? cow, cow, cow? No, I, I got my theory on what happened, but I'll, I'll explain the rest of this to you. And I want, I want your analysis on it. So I go, hey, man, what's going on? He's like walking up. There's a, there's me here, a fence right here, and he's about, now he's about 10 yards away. And he shakes, he scratches his head and goes, man, you ain't going to believe what happened to me. And he just now, stops? I paused for three seconds. That guy paused for like 10 and I like did very long. And I'm brain, like, brain just short circuited, dude. And I'm looking at him like, "Well, do tell, <laughs> sir. Like you're on our property. Inform and, me, weary traveler." Yeah, yeah. And he goes, "Well, I went down to the Peace River to walk my dog when some people drove up to me." And he goes, "I parked my truck down at Horse Creek, not Peace River." I was going to say he made it all the way down. to. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peace River's like five miles away. This Horse Creek's like a mile away from where we are. He goes, I parked my truck at Horse Creek to walk my dog, and some two people pulled up in a pickup truck and said, nice dog, and pulled out a revolver and shot my dog, and I've been running through the woods ever since. And that goes, but now I'll, I'll be honest, like, I'm one of the worst people, like, my brothers, God bless them, if they hear something funny, like, what the hell do you mean? No, that makes sense. Like, <laughs> I, me, I gotta, like, really compute it, like... No, that doesn't really sound all. And I go, what in the departed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'm looking at this guy, and he, he tells me that story after there's like a 10 second pause, and I go, okay. And, and so he says he's been running from the road and from these people ever since. And to put this in perspective, he'd have to run like a mile north in the dark through woods he does not know, and then like a mile and a half west through woods and creeks that he does not know. And like I said, this it's one of them bad algebra problems. <laughs> it really, it really, <laughs> if a yeah. scared homeless man yeah. run, runs three miles north. Uh, and I look at him and go, well, is there anybody you can call to come pick you up right now? He goes, you can call my mom, Brenda. I go, what's her number? I'll call her right now. And I didn't say this. I'll like, get you the fuck out of here. <laughs> as quickly as I can. We got bulls and heifers to work. Like, forgive it. I still got a big work day ahead yeah. of them. I don't want to deal with this shit. And uh, I call the phone number. It goes straight to voicemail. But it is like a wolf, an older woman's voicemail. Uh, yeah, well, you can go and get off the property. And, you know, well, maybe we got done. I'll see what I can do for you. And the guy walks to our south to the state road. Instead of walking towards Horse Creek, where he said his truck was, he walks the opposite direction. Walks about 100 feet, and we go out to the road to see if he's still walking, and he's gone. And our guess is he crossed the the state road to the south and kept... So here's... What, what do you think happened, Merce? That's about the totality of the situation. You were high, and he was never there. <laughs> I would say that's a good guess, but I had to work cows. I need my I need my wits about me when I do that. I, I can't I can't be smoking and doing. You're that. the only one that saw this, man. No, no, no. Two illegal Mexicans <laughs> that work with me also watched and, and verified all this. And one of their little sons that was behind me that I didn't realize. Uh, here's my guess. I Is there a, any fugitives spit out lately? Well, that's what I'm about to get. I don't. I think he was a fugitive of another kind. If I had to guess, this guy was driving on a lily grade which is about a mile from our property, a road. And probably he was either poaching or doing something. Cops pulled him over, pulled the car over, and he, he was either with the people. You know, in the country, people do drive-by poaching where you just drive off. Did it look like he'd been out there a long time or just like yes. the night? 
like the whole like the night. Okay. The whole like that night, like he ran through a bunch of crap. He didn't know what he was running through. Okay, but he wasn't Barefoot. all like super skinny and like malnourished looking, or he kind of looked like a crackhead. Well, yeah, okay. he kind he kind of looked like a meth junkie, you know. Uh, eyes in the back of his head, big pupils, real bony looking. But not no, not like a homeless guy that had been living off the land for three weeks. You encountered actual Florida man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, real yeah. real life Florida man, yeah, real small town Florida man. Um, <laughs> I would bet, yeah, probably fugitive or something like that. The craziest that I saw, which looking back now, I think it maybe was a fugitive. We were, I was with a buddy, and we were airboating on the Peace River, and we come around this guy, and he's got a makeshift raft. When you say makeshift, what's it made? Driftwood. Of? Like, okay. like tied together like, like and he's got like, yeah. Style. And he's got like the straps from a life jacket wrapped around it and like a backpack on it. And he said that doesn't float well enough for him to be even on it. It's just like kind of, tipping. he's like got his hands like up on it. And like, it's like, so there's just like his shoulders are out of the water and the rest of his body's hanging. And this is down like South of Nocatee oh, going it's deep. And yeah, yeah. Like going out like or South, like past, I don't think quite the navigator and stuff. Okay. Yet. And he tell and where it's for the, for the and we stopped by. That's well, where it goes from like a shallow river, river to, to like a yeah. harbor kind of ish area. Yeah, he's not quite that far yet, but that's where he's headed. And we asked him, like, "Do you need help or what are you doing?" He's like, "No, I'm trying to make it to Punta Gorda." And we're like, "Well, do you need a ride?" Nope, I'm fine. Didn't want anybody to mess with him or help with him. And we're like, anything. We're like, you know. So we went on down the ways and everybody and we came back by and he was still floating and waved and we like later we were sitting around thinking like. I bet he's a fugitive. There's a reason he's not on the roads or he's just... Right. That's, like, not in a canoe or... It was just... And it was, like, the weirdest thing. And we were also wondering, it was like, I bet a gator or a shark gets him before he even makes it. But it was... There's some weird happenings in the woods in these parts. Oh, dude, and you've got to be in a desperate situation to be just... Uh, no, thank you. We ran from the cops. We used trucks, damn it. <laughs> we... High powered. Uh, well, we're also not. I'm not built for long distance running. No. Like you're, if I if I can't evade you in the first hundred yards, you got me. <laughs> if I have adrenaline, I'd like to think I can run through the end of the world. Uh, but if I don't have that, I, I could can... probably the first hundred yards and then. <laughs> well, you're, you're pigeon toed. <laughs> yeah. Bad knees. Yep. Yeah, you're 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 you, you were born like Benjamin Button, like a fifty year old man. Yeah. No facial hair though. No, we're going. I'm. I, I, my fight or flight reflex, it's always on flight, but I can't fly far. <laughs> you can fight too, though. Yeah. That's probably what it'll do. I'm going to run at first, and then it's like, <gasps> hold the ground. Let me tell you something about my producer. When he wants to fight, it's he doesn't stop. Uh, even when he's losing because of mercy, because he's a good friend, he doesn't stop. He's too stubborn. Yep. Uh, I did do one other thing this week, uh, which... I'm going to do a little bit of church bashing here for a second. Sorry. Tell well, me. it is Sunday. It is Sunday. But no, I, I went to a church revival. And like here in the South, this used to be a really big thing. And I, I really think it used to have a significant importance for the community. Because, I mean, my grandfather that grew up poor. He it, talked, was a good, it was a good change of pace. Now, and not only that, like, dude, when you went to a revival, like, people fed you. Like, it was like food and like. And when you're working out in the ruralness and you can't go to town, but every now, like that was a huge deal for everyone to cook and bring their stuff. That's well, basically what happened to you for the last month. The river flooded. Yeah. You couldn't get to, you couldn't get to town. <laughs> yeah, for, pretty much. Uh, but they, uh, you know, I'm sitting in this, I, I went to appease my mom and make her happy. And, you know, I do like, I, I like going to church and listening to someone who's skillful enough to talk to make this thing, and I'm pointing to my brain, shut off and make my crazy bandit questions stop. And there have been a good few preachers who, like, I listen to and I'm like, this, like, feeds my soul. And I don't, like, I might can nitpick a thing or two about what you're saying, but I don't even have the desire to. Like, right. that's, you, the, uh, I love that feeling. There's only been a handful of people that could do that. I'm a good old, give me fire brimstone. Like that, I want to hear a sermon. Yeah. I want to hear a sermon, and I want to hear these songs that are 100 years old. We're, we're... I, I, I mean, I do like the songs, but I'm, like, socially awkward, so I don't like the whole standing and singing and turn around and greet your neighbor. Like, no, don't touch me. I don't, like, like, <laughs> I don't like greeting my neighbors. Like, I'm... let me show up, yell at me, mm -hmm. and then send me home. And tell me some cool before stories. Before football starts. <laughs> you know, I, but this one, there's a, we, we got one of the oldest churches in the county. Uh, and it used to be one of the most popular, uh, but 
not a tad change of pace, change of things recently. It's really changed to, from something I was very happy to bring my kids into that, like as much questions as I have. I remember going to when I was younger a few times. They did like all the the Bible buck things and like the puppet shows, and and it was like a lot big a big to do. Dude, and as and here here's the thing. Even like I can I can hear like a lot of atheists like cringing, going like, "Oh, you're just indoctrinate. It's a way to indoctrinate children into this lifestyle." And it's like, no, we saw kids who like got beat severely by their white trash parents who were like hardly ever fed. A bus would pick them up. And take them to this church where they could get food and people to say nice things to them. And like, it, take God or whatever out of it. Like, what a miracle for some of these kids to get out of these horrible situations on a Sunday. I'll even say that Christianity at a face value, like to atheism. Like, I mean, okay, I can see an atheist point or whatever, but okay, say say it is all a big farce. But mm-hmm. is it really that bad? That, mm-hmm. Oh, like love your neighbor. Do, yeah. you, do, do you get like? There's some decent, absolutely. And, and, and you know, I've heard. And that's playing I, devil's advocate. Yes, and I'm of the mind, I'd rather know the truth. No matter, Like, if there is no God, I'd rather know that and deal with it. But I also accept, if the rest of humanity could not deal with that, maybe religion's a pretty good thing to keep them on the straight and I, narrow. I like the episode of Family Guy, where it's like, they're, uh, they're like in a city, and there's like one, like three guys sitting there, and he's like, hey, did you hear about the baby born in Bethlehem? And they all just start stabbing each other. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty, yeah, pretty much, pretty a lot. A lot of people killing each other in horrible ways over the dumbest shit, which continued after religion was established. And do but, but yeah, I think, look at Korea. But we'll get there. I think that's just natural evolution. <laughs> you leave religion out of that. Uh, but we're talking about the poor people that got squished chasing a K-pop star. Um, but no, like so, I'm at this church. And, you know, when I was little, all the way up to a teenager. I'd hear these really old words and these really old songs. And in the United States, a hundred years is really old, okay? I'm sorry, we're not we're not listening to Gregorian chants while we're in France. Like we're but but like even that hundred years and hearing stuff like go tell it on the mountain and uh, uh our God is not not that one, but you know, a lot of the old hymnal things. There was almost like a holiness to them. There was like, oh, this is special. This is this old stuff that means a lot. Now when I go, I sat in that revival, and the new preacher came up, and he said, yeah, you know, I, we're having a new contemporary music service Wednesdays at whatever time. Y'all need to come there, and I know I know that a lot of y'all ain't into that, but we need to kind of put the hymnal stuff behind us and go to the, conti- and I, like my blood boiled. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to listen to some faggy teenager on a guitar. That's not what church is about. Stop being, stop modernizing it. Stop this. It was, now, you could argue, well, the puppet show in the 90s was a form of modernizing it, but I don't care. <laughs> Leave it at that. Yeah, but Sesame Street was also big then, too. Yeah. But And even like, you know, and here's the thing. I've always wondered, my, my daughter validated something with me the other day. You know, I've wondered, at, when my dad, when, when I was a kid and I'd hear my dad just go like, movies suck nowadays. I, I, I miss John Wayne. And, uh, and now we're getting older and we're saying movies suck. And I'm like, it, are we just doing the same thing they did? Or is this... A fundamentally different thing. I'll be the first to admit I don't like most modern music, but I haven't. I haven't really since like high school. Most of the stuff that's no, well, even like, in high school, I was listening yeah. to older. In high school, I stopped listening to new country, new yeah. Nashville. I was like, it's all the same. But even my daughter, what were we watching? If it's not under a neon moon, I don't want it. Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> Ain't nobody can play like Ronnie Dunn. Uh, but no, even my daughter, I think she saw Hocus Pocus too, which yeah. I'm scared to go. I like the original Hocus Pocus, but. I never saw it. Never saw it? Because you're a so... <laughs> well, I just never, like, yeah, I never was, like, around it or whatever. Because your parents made sure well, you pro- Yeah, probably. <laughs> There's so many things you just missed out on that's, like, everybody knows this, but not... Maybe that's why life's hard for me now. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, Hocus Pocus, I remember as a kid, good movie, funny movie, silly movie. And my, my daughter was at her mom's. And her mom showed her Hocus Pocus and then Hocus Pocus too. You know, there's like, what, 30 year difference between yeah. those two movies. And even my daughter was like, oh, the original was a lot funnier. The original was like the, and when, I, when we were in the 90s, we would never say something from the 70s or 60s is the better movie or the funnier. Like, you know, we were always about the new stuff. Well, until I got my internet set up, I would still be in here just watching the Andy Griffith show. I know, that was sad. That, I was concerned about you. I was more concerned about that than other things. <laughs> but, 
No, and I was like, thank you, daughter, for validating, like, my, like, no, we're not just old men. This is something different. Uh, and I think that makes me validate things a little bit. Uh, how the hell did I get into that headwind? Church. I'm not contemporary. Yeah, yeah. So, all this can, you know, it seemed like so many people, that maybe I was the weird one growing up. But when I went to church, like, this was like a big deal to me growing up. I'm like, oh, this is how I don't burn in hell forever. Like, this is how I go about this. This is like more important than anything else in the world. Maybe not specifically church, but this belief system I have that if I don't adhere to it, going to hell. And I'm, I'm going to pick apart a little bit of American Christian culture for a minute. But the fact that so many self-described Christians who are worried about this, and this is like an old trope, but like, the fact you would skip church for a football game. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, if you're just doing it because of your wife or because of your kids or something like that, or family, or, I, I, I get what you just... Like, if you're the true blue, like, you go to church on your own and stuff like that. Like, you think of, you think who wins a football game is more important? Than, uh, a given. I'm not in really football. Let's say there was the biggest uh, philosophical, historical video game nerd convention. Like, the same day as something I'm worried about for the afterlife. I'm going to the thing that gives me in the afterlife at least. I'm going to be going the next weekend to apologize for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go ahead and be honest about that. I'll put it off one week. <laughs> don't let me die between here and there. Um, so, uh, yeah, there was that. And I feel like, I feel like so much of, there is a centralization to church nowadays. You know, when you see a Baptist church, it's not like that small town Baptist church. It is, the United Baptist up and like they have an organization above them and an organization above them that like centralizes control over what all the churches are going to do. Same thing with United Methodist churches. I, I don't know about that for Baptist. But I, 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 can, I can be wrong. I'm pretty sure the, the movie Footloose was about Baptists because they wouldn't allow dancing. Yeah, that's why my dad left Baptist and became Methodist because he's like, I want to dance. But again, like I said, in the small town where I was just earlier, well, I don't see the difference because all the, I was, I went to a Baptist church. All the Baptists Loved, loved to dance, loved to drink. Like yeah. I don't. Here's what I think the difference is, and this the is, name on the sign is, is in, all I gathered. In a small town, it is. But from what I'm, if, hey, any theologians out there, feel, feel free to correct me. I think, like in the United Methodist Church, first of all, I know like the church does not pick its preacher. The organization above it tells a preacher you're going to go there and preach. Not ours. Pine level did. Oh no, ours uh, ours would like they we'd have a guest we'd have a guest preacher come in and if we liked them then we would uh, accept them. If not, we'd like vote back. Nope. Well, this would. Well, who sent the guest preacher in? Well, I think they interviewed some people okay. around or felt or put some feelers. Well, out. I know at least in our church. So maybe this isn't true with all churches. Like it's like the United Methodist Church of Florida decides who's going to this little small town. I remember one national... of them. I remember one of them got fired because he cheated on his wife. Yeah, that's pretty important. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, that's why I could, uh, I could ne never be a preacher. No. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I ain't throwing those stones. Nope. I'd be hit by a boulder. <laughs> I'm I'm sinful, uh, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Uh, well, that's what most of the problem is. Most people are like self righteous. That you know what you know what I really wish, and there's not. I don't think there is a this for a church. I mean, there might be Bible studies, but I've always been looked at funny in Bible studies. I wish there was a. A form of church where it was open question and dialogue. Yeah. Like it was open, like while the preacher is preaching something, if someone goes, hey, I didn't quite understand that, or I have this point that. Kind what of do goes, you mean? What do you mean? Yeah. Can, can we interpret this in a different way? Because I'll tell you. So, and the preacher, you know, the preacher that came to this revival, I've always liked him. And he's, he's always been a very popular preacher. When I say very popular, like goes and preaches at mega churches and stuff like that. But for one of those, and I'm always a guy that's extremely skeptical of the more popular a preacher is, the more they're like Joel Osteen, uh, the guy in Texas. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I was. However, just, like I what don't, a punchable face, such a punchable face. But this guy, pretty good. But you know, dude, he spent like the first fifteen minutes plugging his book he's selling. 
plugging his podcast that he hosts every hey, day. Hey, hey, hey. Like, oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I'm not telling y'all God sent me to do... Maybe I am kind of telling y'all that. But I'm not... I think you said that in the first episode. I kind of think I did, too. <laughs> I'm not pressuring you into believing it. I'm just trying to convince you of it. That's all. Question me. Open game. I encourage it. I don't I don't look down at it. There's, uh... Yeah. There's... I have so many questions about the Bible that I feel like whenever I ask really smart and devout Christians, a big chunk of them comes off as like pearl clutching or like defensive. Like, yeah. how? Oh, don't, don't question how Adam and Eve had more kids after that. And we ended up getting a population out of one family screwing around. It's like, but I, I, I'd like, I just like to know if there is one. Yeah, maybe that's why there's so many stupid people in the world. Well, I'll tell you this. My, my mom had a quote on that. And it's whenever, uh, is it Cain that kills Abel? Yeah. 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 After Cain kills Abel. Oh, I've got something on that, but continue. Uh, you know, and uh, God's like, I can't remember if it's God or Adam banishes him. And it's like, hey, we got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. You're getting kicked out of our family, homie. Like, time to go somewhere else. And, and uh, Cain prays to God. Must be God. Cain's talk to him. goes, hey, well, I'll, I'll be destroyed. I'll be killed. Because what about all the others? And God goes, I'll put a mark on your forehead. That will know that you're mine, and it will protect you from the others. And my mom goes, who's the others? Who are these other people that haven't been, like, yeah. that Cain is afraid of? And it, I think he does say the other people. And it's like, so, and I'm not, I'm not saying, I, I feel like a lot of really, I'm not even going to say atheists, because there are some awesome atheists out there that love entertaining religion stuff, and isn't, you know, don't clutch their pearls straight yeah. so when they hear it. I'd say anti-religious people. I hear a lot of anti-religious people go like, well, that doesn't add up, so thus, all of this is untrue. All of this is fake. And I go, ooh, what if we, like, just misinterpreted something? What if yeah. what, what if there's some context that they knew back then that, like, you know, maybe it's all written down the right way, that we just don't know the context of it now? And that's that's what I love to play with. Like, what, what did they mean? Right. Like, I think, he, I think a lot of the Bible is that. Yeah. It's not necessarily... It's them trying to explain it or in their terms for the time. Yeah. One of my favorite parts is uh, Jesus is like talking to some other priest and he goes... Like just as very matter-of-factly, he goes, you know, as Enoch said in his book, and we've all read that and know it's true, da-da-da-da-da, it's like, whoa, 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 who's this dude Enoch? We're, there's, oh, that's weird. There's not a book on him in the Bible. There's some people name-dropping him, though. Then you go and read the book of Enoch that's actually survived. That's not... Have you ever heard of this? That's not a part of the canonical canonical Bible? No. All right, so back up a little bit. Do you know how the Bible was formed? Have you ever heard of the story, the council? No. Uh, the, so I like what books to keep and... Yeah. What to kick out. And it was. And here's the thing. Like, a lot of anti-religious people will be like, that's proof. It's all fake. They just picked... Do you really truth. think they were named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Of course they were. Or do you think they just went through and picked the whitest no. name? No, I know that Jesus was actually closer to the word, to the name Joshua. Okay. It's like Yeheshua. Okay. But as people said it throughout the years, it turned into, in okay. English, turned into, that's like a buckaroo. Comes from the Spanish word vaquero, or vaquero for cowboy. Okay. It's just, that twi- that's only a hundred years, imagine 2000. Uh, but, the hell was I just saying? Oh, the, the council. The, yeah, the council. They picked and chose what books go in the Bible, and like kind of in their defense. I criticize them a, a lot for the stuff they put in and the stuff they didn't. But in their defense, you also do have crazy cults back then that are just going, guy wrote this down and said, Jesus definitely said this. Everybody did it. And they're like, whoa, whoa, we can verify that's only a hundred years old and Jesus is like, well, that's what I was stepping in that, like, like Mormons. I say, so I Googled, a, like, I don't know what it brought me to, <laughs> I Googled this something about like things like, you know all the crazy Mormon beliefs? They believe black people are the descendants of Cain. And therefore, not good. But if they're saved as for redemption, God will make them white. That's wild. Yeah, and up until recently... What do they think of Michael Jackson? I don't... I guess he does. <laughs> but up until recently, like, black people weren't allowed to be, like, elders or members or higher-ups in the church because of that beliefs. Dude. That and, like, I, cause I, I was Google, I was like, what kind of craziness? And, like, and I was like, stop. So that, that might not be entirely true, but that's like kind of a core belief Dude, there. Dude, I tell you, Mormonism, 
Mormonism is good evidence of, like, you can have this wacky religion. And I believe it's wacky for my subjective yeah. thing, because a lot of it is. Uh, and they all still, like, South Park did the best thing. Well, like, they're still just kind of really nice people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's how I got on. I was, like, looking at, like, the Oregon Trail stuff. Did you know they even took their own trail because they were being persecuted so bad? Uh, like, they, they got like, kicked off the Oregon one? Yeah, like, apparently how they, like, traveled, like, most of the, the main Oregon Trail goes, like, south of some Nebraska River Valley. But all the Mormons had to take the northern path to stay, oh. like, away. <laughs> God. Yeah, that, yep. Checks out. No, a lot of them went to Mexico. That's where Mitt Romney's family's from. That makes sense. Yeah, there's like there's like in Mexico, and I the the guys that work on the ranch have told me this. The bigger ranch I used to work at. Like you'll go to in certain mountainous valleys, and like all around them, it's like you know typical Mexico. Everything's in a brown lens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like they do in the movies. Then you go in this valley, nothing but white people. Nothing like it's like America in there, but it's it's because that's where the Mormons. Yeah, because they're not descendants of Cain. <laughs> and, God, all right, I don't know how, how true this is. I want to say I read like 10 years ago where they like have machine gun nests on the way into town and they're like, no cartels here. We will violently defend our little corner. I bet their guns go, dum, 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 dum. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but hey. Guys, we hope y'all enjoyed the like little preview we done on Twitter. If we got anybody watching, well, we're going to cut it short right there. And y'all download the podcast for the full episode. Uh, y'all already know what to do. Follow all the plugs, all that jazz.